Guys, welcome to another episode of The Pulse. Every week, excited to talk about people who are doing cool things, legends in the field, and that's how I will describe the person that I'm speaking to today. 25 plus top tens, 30 plus gold and platinum albums. Everybody's familiar with Cool and the Gang. And we've got the founder, Robert Poole Bell. How are you, sir? I'm doing just way, Bill. How are you? I'm great. Thank you very much. You got like a quarter of the platinum albums right there behind you. Uh, yeah, some of my trophies, man. Uh, after 60 years in this business, I uh, started back as uh, the Jazzy Axe in 1964, uh, then changed into the Soul Town uh, Band and to Cool in the Flame and having a problem with the Godfather, Mr. James Brown. So we had to change the name from Cool in the Flame to Cool in the Game. And then 1969, single, album, record, everything was cool in the game. What what happened with, with The Godfather? It didn't like Cool in the Flame? <laughs> well, we didn't want to use it. You know, Mr. Brown was. Man, cool, use your mama's name, Flame. Just call yourself cool, man. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall of that conversation because it sounds like that's exactly how it goes. Hey, man, what's up with that? And obviously, you're the kind of the namesake and the founder. Were you always cool, or did you get the nickname because of some of the musical talent? Well, actually, uh, I was born back in Youngstown, Ohio. When I came to Jersey City, I came up with the name Cool at that time. That's before the band started, and that was in 1960. Uh, there was a guy that calls himself cool, he spelled it with a C. And I decided to change mine to, to a K. Uh, he's an old country boy trying to fit in the neighborhood, uh, <laughs> surrounded by New York and Newark. So you know what that was. <laughs> <laughs> so the name was well before kind of the music and the group and the band. It just happened to fit with what your life would then become. Absolutely. No, cool is cool. I, I know that it's going to be cool in the game. It was, uh, fit right in at the time. How did you get started? So I was reading in Jersey, a bunch of talented people just kind of organically came together. How'd that happen? Well, uh, like I said, we started as a Jazzy Act. Then we got involved with an organization called itself the Soul Town Review. Now, the Soul Town Review was trying to be like the Motown Review. So we became the Soul Town Band. And we had to learn all these Motown songs. So we were backing up maybe seven to eight artists uh, twice, twice a month. And then we moved on to Cool and the Flames. And uh, again, we played James Brown songs and, you know, a little sly. And that's what we moved on to become um, uh, Cool and the Flames. And then went on to Cool and the Gang. I have a question. So you're the founder of the band, but you play the bass, talented bass player. How, how'd you get to be the namesake? You know, the bass player usually uh, in the back there with the drummer, you know? But uh, again, I think it was because of how, you know, uh, we needed to come up with a name. And that's when we decided to go with uh, a Cool in the Gang. So that put me as the leader of the group, the lead name. Of course, uh, as the time went on, you know, uh, we, uh, later on down the line, we had J.T. Taylor, you know, and uh, that's when we cut, you know, Ladies Night and all the stuff of the 80s, mm -hmm. you know. So everybody thinks that the lead singer is the leader, but I was the man in the background, you know, being cool. <laughs> <laughs> so why they name it bad after you? Because I was the guy being cool. Like, it makes perfect sense when you think about it. <laughs> Like, Absolutely, yeah. Why people ask silly questions. You said 60 years now. Um, I read someplace that you were the longest, remain the longest continuous performing group in history. Like, what does that feel like? Well, that feels great. I mean, we're also um, the most sample band in hip hop, which makes us the most sample band in the world because all the sampling, 90% of it came from hip hop. So that, that's a great thing, too. Uh, coming up in, in the 70s, we were more on the funk side, and we did little chants, uh, little things, and little on, on the record, like you know, Jungle Boogie, Open Sesame. It wasn't until um, we're out on tour with uh, the Jackson, 
Back at that time with the Jackson Five. Mm -hmm. And a gentleman by the name of Dick Griffey said, hey, you guys are doing well, you know, on the tour. He said, but I think you need a lead singer. So we said, oh. He said, yeah, I think you need a lead singer. So we talked about it. You had Lionel Richie, the Commodores, uh, Earth, Wind & Fire, Philip Bailey, uh, Maurice White. And we said, well, maybe it's time to make a change. Uh, the owner of the studio recommended James Taylor. Hmm. So he came there, and my brother said, okay. My brother played some jazz progressions. He said, sing to this. Then he played a little funk. He said, sing to that. And then my brother said, you know, uh, you got the, the right kind of, kind of voice that can maybe happen for us. And uh, that's when we came up with Ladies Night. Now, Ladies Night, I was in, hanging out in New York, my wife and I. And uh, we were, you know, at uh, Studio 54 and, and Eugene's. You know, every weekend was a ladies' night. So I came back to the guys. I said, I got a great idea for, you know, uh, one of my songs. They said, what? I said, ladies' night. And my brother said, wow, there's one of those all over the world. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and that's how, <laughs> that's how it started with JC. With ladies night. And you, you talked about the most sampled. I knew you were extremely sampled. I didn't realize you were the most sampled throughout. But then you start naming some of the songs. Uh, and I'm looking down the list. Everybody from Mace to Will Smith to Little Kim to Jay to DJ Cool, you, know, you continue on. Everybody has sampled your stuff. Has that kind of helped with the whole process of this 60 years of longevity? Because when you guys start playing songs, even if people may not be familiar with the original, they sit back and go, oh. Oh, yeah. Uh, Quest Love told me, he said, hey, you have been sampled 1,800 times. I said, what? Cool the Gang is one of the most sampled groups in hip hop history. So many have taken from them. We have Hollywood swinging. Everyone used that. Hey, hey, hey. What you got to say? We got Give It Up, Eric B and Rakim, Gangstar, Jimmy Castor Brunch, Ladies Night for the ladies, Little Kim, Missy Elliott, Angie Martinez, Let's Go Dance, New La La, Lady Gaga. You didn't know that, did you? Jazzy Jeff with the Fresh Prince for Summertime, Aaliyah, Snoop Dogg. 1,800 times, Chris? I said, we should have somebody on sample patrol that many times. <laughs> but we're talking about drum beats and guitar licks and horn licks and et cetera, et cetera. So I'm, now I'm going to get in your pockets. And this is something that I generally don't do. But when you say you found out you sampled 1,800 times, is there ever a time when you go, well, well, wait a minute, then somebody should be sending me some money? Well, you know, actually, uh, we saw this to see income from that. Actually, I think it was the time uh, President Biden was on, on the board uh, to move to have that if you sample, you have to pay. And made that move, but there were the record companies. So then the record companies were involved, and uh, they'll go out and if someone, uh, you have to get clearance. If an artist wants to sample our music, they have to get clearance from the record company and from Warner Chapel, the publisher. So then early on, that didn't have to happen. So people could just kind of take your stuff with freedom. That's what they were doing. Oh, man. <laughs> Back then. What? That's not okay. Uh, it paid off. I mean, like, Will Smith was summertime. Yeah. With Summer Madness. He had to get the okay on that. That became a number one record, uh, a platinum record. And then he went on to be a movie star. Coming up, when you've been doing your thing for half a century, you got lots of fun stories. We had to do five shows. You started at 8 o'clock, the last show was, was uh, like 7 in the morning, the breakfast show. And people had eaten their bits and eggs, man. We were still out there. And it, it is tough to appropriately acknowledge all the success in multiple Hall of Fames, Performers Hall of Fame, Songwriters, Hall of Fame. Your songs are in the National Recording Registry. Artifacts are in the Grammy Museum and the Smithsonian. Like it, it's hard to acknowledge everything. But at what point did you guys kind of say, 
wow, we're, we're really on to something. Like, this is, this is a big deal. And it just stopped being, or maybe it never stopped, we're performing and having fun, and it is, wow, we're making an impact on history. Yeah, I mean, um, all those different uh, accolades that we have received, uh, we still are not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Really? Really, yes. And we don't know what that problem is. I don't know. We've been in just about everything that you said. Even the uh, celebrations are played on the uh, space station. I feel like anybody who has won anything <laughs> over the last <laughs> you know, 30, 40 years, like you just expect to hear celebration. Yeah, definitely. All right, we got to do and something. Let us know where the petition is or whatever so we can rally people to get you guys in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. That is absolutely supposed to happen. We're, we have a, a residency at Westgate, and now you got the Super Bowl. You know, all roads are leading to Vegas. And whoever wins, I hope they're going to have a nice cold glass of my champagne called the Champagne. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually, I was going there, so that is a smooth, <laughs> okay. that's a smooth transition. But with all that level of success, now starting this residency in, in Vegas, and it's one of those things where only a handful of kind of the top folks can do these residencies uh, in Vegas. Are you excited about this? What are people going to see? How did this come to happen? We're very excited about what happened here, residency. We've been going uh, in and out of Vegas for almost, uh, shoot, 20 years or more. We had a contract with Caesars. We had played a lot of corporate stuff. Uh, so, you know, uh, Vegas has been... Uh, very good to it. But now with a residency and with the fact that Westgate was the home of uh, Elvis Presley. So uh, it's a great place, a great place to be. You know? So to do to do 60 years, to do a residency uh, in Vegas, you have to still love this, right? I mean, performing is not, I'd imagine, I, I can't sing and don't play any instruments, but I would imagine that performing like that is not easy. Like you have to have a passion for that still. Yes, we do. You know, I, I love what I'm doing here. The fact that uh, we did get a little break, not a wanted break, but two years of COVID, we didn't perform at all. So when we finally went out, uh, we played Europe. We did uh, 18 shows, you know, uh, 20 shows. And we played all through Europe. And we played places that was like little uh, Woodstock, you know, 30,000 people, some 10,000 people, 20,000 people. And so they were so happy to see us after after COVID. You know, I lost my brother, I lost DT, I lost George Brown. Uh, I'm like the, the last man standing from the original uh, members of Cool the Gang. Now the album before that, that my brother came up with before he passed, you know, uh, it was called Perfect Union. And it was, uh, uh, we had a song on there called The Pursuit of Happiness. When uh, Biden was running president, uh, when he was nom nominated, they played Celebration. Of course, when he won, they played Celebration. But he started talking about the pursuit of happiness. So my brother was like, oh, okay, tied into that whole Celebration thing and the whole perfect union, okay? It all kind of worked together. You just, you're just getting paid. <laughs> let's, let's tie it into whatever you know i'm surprised y'all didn't write yes we can whatever well um, we do get down on it yes you can get down on it see you can't do it. there you go <laughs> it, it, it continues uh, so the tour continues you're actually coming to our area atlantic city the ocean casino uh february 17th People are very familiar with your music, but there have been kind of like an evolution over time, different members coming in and out. Uh, so when we see Cool and the Gang perform now, what are we gonna see? Well, actually, we, um, we put a production together that we opened up with uh, in our last uh, time we were in Vegas uh, back in October. So you're gonna see a full production of Cool and the Gang. Uh, that's sort of like what some of the other groups are doing in Vegas. We're bringing that to Atlantic City and uh, at the uh, casino, the Ocean Casino. We feel, we feel very good about it. So uh, I'm looking forward to it, you know. Uh, I'm trying to think of it. There's a club there we played 
uh, many years ago. We had to do five shows. You started at eight o'clock, and the last show was, it, it was uh, like seven in the morning, the breakfast show. And people had eaten their grits and eggs, man. We still out there. <laughs> you're, you're not you're not still in the club after your shows in Atlantic City. You're not you're not still doing that. You're not hitting the after hour spots after the show. No, 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 no. I let the young boy do that. <laughs> yeah, right. What what I what I am doing? I'll have a nice cold glass of cool champagne. Coming up next, music stardom was big, but that was just the beginning. Yeah, yeah I want to get on the shelf. Like Don Pelion. That's right. I, I we only came up with the name Le Cool Champagne. <laughs> How'd you come up with Cool Champagne? Touring. I uh, must have been about maybe ten years ago. We had a tour, and uh, we had uh, close to fifteen sold out shows in France. So the promoter came to me. He said, "Listen, I'm doing something with the late Barry White, Barry White lookalike." And the BGs, I'm doing the champagne, and he said, uh, "Would you guys like to, you know, sell your champagne on this 15-day uh, tour in France?" I said, "Well, I don't think my fans want want to get a bottle of champagne after the concert. They're gonna want T-shirts, caps, autographs." But I said, "I would like to get on the shelves," and he looked at me. "You want to get on the what?" I said, "Yeah, I want to get on the shelf." Like Don Peter Young. That's style. right. Don Leonard, you know. He said, well, okay. I we only came up with the name Le Cool Champagne. <laughs> and I ended up cutting a deal uh, with the Bertolo family up in Ipanema. And Ipanema. That's how it all started to come together. Started putting it together. And we finally uh, brought it to America, like, like Eddie Murphy coming to America. <laughs> so it was cool coming to America. <laughs> You decided to make it French by calling it Le Cool. <laughs> yeah, Le Cool. <laughs> it, 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 it's working because, listen, listen, the fact that uh, all the different celebrations around the world, there you're drinking Don Perry, you know, Cristal, the major boy. So why not Le Cool? But when they were drinking it, what song did they play? It makes perfect well, sense. Well, a very good time, come on. It makes right? sense. Drink Le Cool while you're having your celebration. That's it. Yeah. I got a note for you, too. What's that? When it gets too hot, have your nice cold glass of cool champagne. <laughs> <sighs> the, the hustle is real. <laughs> Much respect. Coming up, let's find out if it's too late even for me to be cool enough to join Cool in the Gang. So you What's tell that? us whether or not these instruments are cool enough to be a part of Cool in the Gang. The kazoo, can I get in with the kazoo? So you What's tell it? us whether or not these instruments are cool enough to be a part of Cool in the Gang. The kazoo, can I get in with the kazoo? That's on one of our songs, uh, Funky Man and Funky Stuff. See, I feel like that I can- little sound, That little sound you hear in the beginning, that's a kazoo. I feel like there's still a chance for me. So <laughs> we'll find out. <laughs> we'll talk. I'm going I'm to take a little bit of time. I'm going to learn the kazoo. And then I'll holler at you at the February 17th show. Well, we play funky stuff. Maybe you can come on out there and do a little something with your kazoo. My guy. That would be that would be it. I can say I got out there and played with Cool and <laughs> again. I appreciate you so much. We end every episode of The Pulse with this concept of use your voice for good. We want to inspire people. We want to know what that type of thing means to our guests. So when you hear the phrase, use your voice for good, what does that mean to you? I mean, that you're getting down on something. Use your voice for good. Do what you do. Be what you want to be. Never give up. Keep on striving. I like it. I appreciate you, sir. Guys, thanks so much for watching another episode of The Pulse today with Cool of Cool and the Gang. Great stories, unbelievable background, and maybe, you know, maybe you grab some champagne and a kazoo and make a party out of it. Appreciate you watching and remind you that you can always watch full episodes on YouTube. You can hear the uninterrupted podcast. All places podcasts are available. And now you can check us out 
on Fox Local. Everything is right there on your connected and streaming TVs. It's a great time. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And as always, I leave you the way I always do, reminding you whenever you can, use your voice for good and have a good one.